Morning. Be aware. That's not my face. Try that again. Morning. Genuine electrical content coming now. I've got a job today where we are not getting a signal when a generator is poorly, which means it'll be the control system. So I'm going to hopefully today explain PLCs, how they work and what they do. I'm oh, fucking excited for you, motherfuckers! This here is a Somatic Siemens S7 uh, 1500 PLC processor. So that is the brains of the operation, yeah? You see this rail that's behind it? That would normally be full of cards, but in this situation, we only use the process. But the important thing to remember is most programmable logic controllers have to have a programmable logic controller, which is known as the processor. And in this case, this is one of those. Although we don't use the I.O. on this, we communicate with another version of I.O. across comms. So we need to talk about comms. But first, I'll show you another kind of processor. This is an IntelliMains back base box. This is also another form of PLC processor. However... This is a PLC processor for a specific application, i.e. running a site with generation on. And because of that, it is tailored to that, apply, uh, to that, to that thing. So it's got a lot of fixed I.O. on it. There's some inputs and some outputs and some mains things and some analog things and all that. And that is because everywhere that gets used, you probably want this I.O. Whereas most normal processors like the Siemens don't come with any I.O. You add all that, although that is doing a job on its own. It's doing some number crunching. On comms, which I'm getting to, but yeah, this one is specific. Uh, we use a lot of com amp stuff, and all their stuff, all their paperwork is online for free. You can look at all their paperwork if you're into generation, but yeah, it's another form of PLC. There's loads of forms of PLC about. PLC is a big blanket covering programmable logic controls, which is everything from smart relays to I don't know, massive, huge Alan Bradley MicroLogic setups. So we know we've got a brain, yeah? We've got a brain. So what does that do? What, where's the programmable logic part come from? That comes from the fact that you have various things you can tell your processor. Like on a computer, when you press the letter A, it knows you press the letter A, and the processor or the graphics card or both of them work out you press the letter A, then they tell the graphics to drive a letter A on the screen if you're in a word processor. So you've got an input, which is you pressing a button, and you've got an output, which is the screen changing its value to represent what you've just done. And that is basically all computers in the world ever have to have inputs. And then they can go through processors or subroutines and all that. And then they can provide an output. So in the world of controls, let's have a look at what some of those inputs and outputs can be. Talk a bit about comms because that's particularly important on PLCs because what you've got to remember is the inputs and the outputs are only connected via software. That's the whole point of a PLC for it to be programmable. So in the case of this, normally have loads of cards here. On the ones down here, it's part of the unit. So I'm going to use them as an example. But every input and output I'm going to go through on this one could be this in the form of a module card. Think of it as like a an add-on bit. That just goes on. I'll put a picture up of it later, maybe, if it can be asked. But I'm going to take you through some of the inputs and outputs and the comms process. So, IntelliMains are made by Comamp. They've got a lot of information online if you want to have a look at follow this at home, yeah? So, down here, we've got a lot of comms going off. We've got Ethernet, which is obviously is like getting to be the standard thing. We've got USB, which my laptop's plugged into at the minute. We've got RS-232, which is a rock-solid stable of the communications world, which ain't going anywhere anytime soon, and I think has been around since the 1960s. We've got RS-485, which is his bigger brother, and we've got CAN bus, which is particularly used on this system and engines. It's basically a, a very hard-wearing protocol, network protocol, which is not susceptible to interference and things like that. We've got some binary inputs, which I would call digital inputs, I think. And then we've got some analogs here, look, AL, 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 which I'm going to go to in a bit more detail in a minute. We've got another RS-485. Binary outputs, which I would call digital outputs in the world I'm from, but they, they name it differently. These ones down here are um, mains voltage current inputs from CTs, which are specifically special to this device. Don't worry about those, but all the other ones I've gone through exist on that type of PLC as well as that type of PLC. So on this system, the cards would go on the side and they communicate via a bus. So there's some communication bus which is in the back plane. I think it might be profit bus on these or they might have their own internal network. On these ones, if you want to add things, if there's not enough going off here, you can add these cards down here. Now these ones have inputs, outputs, 
or inputs and outputs are programmable. And you can also get them as analog, which I'm going to go into in a minute what these do. And these communicate, yeah, all of these communicate to that on canvas. So you shove something in here, it gets turned to communication, told, sent to this to tell you what it's doing. The, the computer programming thing does what it's got to do, and it can pump it back out to one of these to do an output. That's how it works. So nothing here electrically is wired. It comes in, goes on comms, gets processed, goes on comms, comes out in some fashion somewhere in the machine. Obviously, that process doesn't have to happen on this side. We've got the internet now. You could pump something to this one here, and you could send it via the internet, and it could pump out on another one if you wanted to. You've got worldwide control over comms. So you've got an in, you've got a process, you've got, sorry, you've got an in, you've got comms, you've got a process, you've got comms, you've got out. And that might be, press this button, turn on a light. Yeah? You could make that then. Press this button, turn on 10 lights in software. You could make it, you've got to press 10 buttons to bring a light on in software. The possibilities in the software are endless, but we're not here today to talk about software. We're going to talk about hardware, and we're going to now talk about just the basics. We've talked about processing that. We're going to talk about what you can put in and what you can get out. On the inputs and the outputs, we've got two main different types here, which we're going to go into. There's more than that, but I'll just keep it simple, yeah? First of all, we're going to talk about what inputs and outputs there are. You can have digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs and analog outputs. Let's talk about digital inputs and outputs first. Digital inputs, or on this system they're called binary inputs, are either ones or zeros. They're either on or they're off. So if you want to tell this PLC that, I don't know, the oil pressure out there is healthy, you have an oil pressure switch that when it's active, pumps out 24 volts and that'll go straight to this car that's 24 volts. That car will then see it and it'll tell your computer that you have an active digital output it reads as a one if it's not there it reads as a zero it's as simple as that if you say want to know if the lights in this room are on and they're 240 you can either have a 240 volt input card or more than likely you'll operate a relay with a 240 volts and then you put 24 volts through that to signal to the device the possibilities are endless some manufacturers make 12 volt 24 volt 110 240 volt cards but generally, you sort of standardise around the 24 volt area and use relays because it keeps things nice and simple. Digital output, the computer will turn on the thing at a certain volt. So say it's 24 volts, and then you can use that 24 volts to drive, I don't know, a lamp or an alarm. Or you can make it operate a relay, which then can go on to do anything you want. So if I want to use the computer to turn these lights on, I would wire my light switch into a relay so the contacts would close. And then I'd power the 24 volts out of this to power that relay, which would then turn the lights on. Relays are just interfacing devices that allow you to use different funky and crazy voltages with low voltage devices. And that is pretty much digital I.O. I don't think I've missed anything there, but if I have, feel free to ask me or tell me and I will cover it a bit in here. Let's talk about analog inputs and outputs. Analog I.O. is different. You, if you've got a tank and it's got a level it can be at from, I don't know, say zero to a thousand litres, you could put hundreds and hundreds of sensors up it that tell you exactly what the literage is, but you'd lo use loads of I.O. So to get around that, we have a thing called analog inputs and outputs. That is where a device measures a distance or measures a volume or measures a pressure that can range from zero to, say, 100, and it assigns an analog value to that an analog value could be, for example, the most common one is 4 to 20 milliamps, which I've covered in another video that's on here. 0 to 10 volts, 0 to 20 milliamps, 1 to 5 is popular as well. And they are proportional values. So, for example, if it was, if it was 0 to 20 milliamps and the tank was half full, it would read 10 milliamps. Basically see it as a way of transmitting a percentage as an electrical voltage or current value. The flip side of that, you might have a fan that can run at 0 or off to 3000 rpm and if that's got an analog input basically the lower analog input say zero volts would mean off and the higher analog input say it was 10 volts would mean full speed and you can go anywhere in between to achieve that speed so the computer could say get a temperature level and it could display that on a screen as from i don't know the ambient temperature minus 10 to plus 50 and then your fan could run proportionally to that value of temperature 
to move air through here at different speeds to maintain a temperature. When you do two analog values like that, where you've got an input and an output that are in relation, that's called a PID loop. I'm not gonna go into those today. Google it if you wanna get a bit advanced, but yeah. So you've got digital and analog. Then you've got your comms. Finish your story off, it's got way labels of something else, yeah. The other communication input and output you've got is comms. When you're using comms, it's bi-directional. So for example, this box talks to this box, which is okay because they're by the same manufacturer. But when you start trying to comm with things that aren't by the same manufacturer or aren't the same protocol, you start to get issues. And also, just in general, comms can give you issues anyway. CAN bus, as I've said, which communicates between these two, just talks to each other literally like, like we do, is pretty stable. Let me show you an example of where comms wouldn't be used, even though it's probably cheaper and easier. UPS has loads of gubbins it can tell the system, yeah? It's got an RS-232 port, so it's probably capable of being connected to our PLC on RS-232. And this RS-232 port probably offers every single thing about this, its temperatures, its voltages, it offers everything. But all I really want from this is, is it running or is it faulted? So, rather than run two separate cores and use the relays in here, I'll just use the RS-232 and I'll get all the data back to my PLC, which is more useful to me because I can look at loads and loads and loads of stuff. However, in reality, what I'd do is I'd get a relay off that that says running and I'd get a relay off that that says fault and I'd wire them into an analog card as digital 24 volts because it's just solid. They'd be normally closed, so if they got lost, we'd register it as a fault. Whereas with comms, it has to say, hey, I've broken. And if this doesn't hear it say, hey, I've broken, then this doesn't know it's broken. Unless it says, hey, I'm broken, 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 all the time, this might not get it. When it's a one shot, hey, I'm broken, no response, that's when you get lost comms or corrupted comms. And in that case, this might never find out that's broken. It might say it every minute. Also, a simple IO signal on or off requires a very low amount of data and can be checked on a regular basis. If you've got things that are not essential, communicate with this all the time on communications, it clogs up the processor. I often need to say to people, yeah, you can't do much with electricity in the controls forum. You can turn it on and off. You can adjust the voltage. You can adjust the current. You can adjust the frequency. I think that's it. Tell me if there's any more. I might have got them wrong, yeah, but current, voltage, on or off, or frequency. That's pretty much it. So that means all your inputs and I, all your I.O., your inputs and your outputs, whether they are analog or whether they are digital, must be done on, off, voltage, current. Your data, 485-232, Profibus, Azibus, USB, Serial. There's a few of us out there, but we don't have them. They're all searchable on the internet. They're all really complicated. I don't profess nothing about them. But yeah, with PLCs, remember, all it does, take something in, communicates it, processes it, communicates it, throws it out, that's it. Obviously, understanding all that and making it work is fucking rocket science, that's why I do it. Ooh. I'll probably stick this on YouTube. I've got about 5,000 videos for it to go on YouTube that I just haven't got time to deal with at the minute. But if anyone's interested, or if anyone wants to question anything I've said, or do anything like that, I'm gonna put a box pin, I'll try and answer some PLC-based questions. If you're gonna ask me where training comes from and all that, don't bother. Go online, find a PLC, get the manual, and you can buy smart relays to do that. Uh, Schneider ones are pretty good. Uh, I know Eddie, Pegasus Electrical, uses smart relays to do all sorts of mad shit on BMS controls. Um, and I know they are very powerful, the baby PLCs. But yeah, if you want to ask me, oh, I'm just in the studio. I was responding to the uh, Apprentice 1 to 1 podcast back on that. So yeah, I'll respond to these. Trend Digital System 24 volts, digital, 0 to 10 volts, analog. How do you test the voltages? You test the voltages like you always test voltages with a voltmeter. I know that might sound a bit like I'm being sarcastic, but I'm not. If it's 24 volt, the neutral in a control panel will be tied down to earth, as will the zero volts of the analog. So you should be able to test between the pos and neg of the analog signal, or the pos and neg of 24 volt, and you should be able to test between the positive of both those signals and earth and get a reading with a normal voltmeter. You won't blow anything up as far as I'm aware, uh, and I have worked on trend. This one, who I get to see who's posted this and you don't, yeah? And my advice to this person is, yes, I do know what I'm doing, but if I didn't, I'd probably become an area manager, yeah? Because you can't hack it in the ECNR department.